Hi everybody, I'm Michael. Today we're going to be bringing you some wonderful butterfly attracting plants. These butterfly magnets are sure to bring these wonderful, wonderful insects to your garden. So, family, are you guys ready to dig in? Sure am, Mike. Let's, Let's grow. Go. So today we're going to go over five butterfly magnet plants. The first one we're going to start with is what, Steph? The milkweed. The giant milkweed. So this is a beautiful plant. It's a butterfly magnet for sure. It is the host plant for the endangered monarch butterfly, as is the tropical milkweed and the native milkweed, and we'll talk about them in a second. It has but, purple flowers. Yes, these aren't they beautiful? Look at those flowers, so pretty. This is a wonderful plant. It's easy to, to differentiate. Oh, we have butterfly, we have a monarch just flew, flew on off screen. You're gonna, we're gonna, hopefully we'll get some here right now because we got so many butterfly plants. Sorry, I digress. But this plant is easy to differentiate between these other milkweeds and the tropical milkweed is not really recommended these days. They're, they're the most easiest to come by. They're very robust growers, but the tropical milkweed hosts this parasite-like organism that can that can build up inside the the, the uh, monarch butterfly, and, and it's not always it's not always recommended to do this because if if they don't die all the way down, this pest can reemerge and it causes an issue. So you want to use the native milkweed, which looks very similar to this. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. But back to the giant. Such a cool plant, very dusty green leaves, right? Really, really rough. It almost looks like a, a, t a type of like ficus, Elephant like a, ear. or no, 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 it close. doesn't <laughs> like a ficus, it's like a Audrey, duck. but it's, it's a really cool plant and the monarch will use it for its larval host. So these plants, a lot of these are the larval hosts for butterflies and that's what makes them magnets. You have some plants that are nectar sources and butterflies will come to them all range, all different types of butterflies but this being a host plant, they're sure to bring monarchs. And it's just such a cool structural plant. You can keep her in a pot. Um, it can grow to about 10, 10 feet by five feet. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful plant. After, by the way, after we're done talking about these, these plants here in, in general terms, we're gonna rotate over into written care instructions so you can see how to take care of all of these plants in your garden. So now that we talked about the giant milkweed, we're gonna talk about the the native and non-native milkweed. So let me bring this one over here. And Steph, look how different they look, right? You wouldn't even think it's related. Yeah, this is thinner, thinner yeah. stems. Totally different looking. The tropical milkweed grows really fast. And because it's a larval host, caterpillars will just eat these leaves and stems all the way down, but it grows back much faster than the native here. And look how sad this guy looks. So that's a problem with the native, it's sometimes doesn't it's not i found as robust as the tropical that's why so many growers and nurseries and big box uh, retailers are selling these tropical milkweed it's because they're just so easy to grow monarchs love this just as much as the other they don't know the difference but this one again the tropical milkweed can bring a pest a pathogen that can get into the monarchs and stunt their wings and other developments of the beautiful butterfly the flowers flowers are very similar on these guys they'll be reddish and more reddish orange on the tropical, and we'll give you a side-by-side -side of both the native and non-native, so you get an idea of how to differentiate. And the native, even though this is stunted here, gets about the same size as this, sim similar leaf, but its flowers are more orange. And again, the butterfly doesn't know the difference, but it's better to use the native milkweed and or the swamp milkweed, which is a native to Florida, but you need to have that planted in an area where it more, has more moisture. Mike, what attracts the butterfly to these particular plants? Monarchs, and also the queen and the soldier. Those are all attractors to the milkweed. It's a wonderful host plant for those those butterflies. Yeah. I know, but why do they like this plant versus? Oh, oh, okay, so that's cool. That's just plants over, because these have plants to try to develop toxins to keep insects from eating them, monarchs have developed an ability to eat the plant and work in symbiotic relationship with them and so this is the only host plant for them. So if, you, if you're spraying down milkweed all through the United States and monarchs have different, different migration patterns, they can um, hurt their ability to propagate uh, their offspring. So the monarch has just developed a, a likeness to these, this genus species and this genus species here to, to put its larva and it can handle 
the toxins that the plants naturally have to keep insects off and tolerate it and grow as it eats the leaves and then pupate into the chrysalis and then the and then the butterfly. And that's that's what a lot of these host plants do. The same thing with the kunti, which we'll talk, which we'll talk about next, right? All right. So tell me about this kunti plant. Am I saying the name right? You are, and it is what? It is beautiful. <laughs> but we practice that it's a Florida native. It is it's Florida a Florida native, native. like me. <laughs> and me and them so it's probably younger than me <laughs> actually actually probably not. no it's your age <gasps> you may know because we've me. done a video on this before on this plant it's prehistoric this thing it's oh a, a psychat and they go back millions of years so yes it's about your age you brought it on not me that was Yay. not even in our script so the kunti one of my favorite florida ground covers absolutely love it Look at this little leaf, Steph. Isn't that beautiful? Uh -huh. We'll come up close and show you up close. You can see the new leaves come out this really bright, bright yellow green. We'll tip it for you. I don't know if you can see it, but we'll do that. So pretty. But we'll also give you a side by side or a zoom in so you can see it. Wonderful, wonderful plant. This is the host plant for the for the I, I have to go back. Did you just call me prehistoric? <laughs> I've been thinking about this. <laughs> Did he just call me prehistoric? That's what it's kind of Well, I'm not, I'm not just a few years behind you, so I think we both are. We're a bunch of dinosaurs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, I did say that, but I still love her very much so. Um, now I lost my train of thought. So you're talking the, about the native kunti, the glossy, glossy green leaves, the Tala butterfly, y'all. Oh, my God such a funny butterfly I, I did a video on this already so you can check to our channel and I, I designed a garden for the parks department and we had a whole bunch of these i planted just tons of them and after a few years of the, the kuntis growing together the italas came and produced so many offspring they're these very clumsy butterflies they'll fly they'll just like bonk into your head they'll hit they'll land on your arm and they're just they're just so fun to watch the fly they're not they're not very graceful, I found, but they're so beautiful. They're dark black with this little red abdomen belly, so pretty. And their larva eats this very tough leaf. The new leaves are very soft, but when the when the, uh, z the zamia here, the kunti grows, these leaves get very tough, but the caterpillar just chews right through it. And it's a wonderful plant to use for attracting the Atala butterfly specifically. It doesn't flower per se. It has these red these red cones, which are which are viable and you can grow grow uh, babies from them but you just have to be careful about pets pets because those those cones those red seeds can can be a problem for some pets if they try to eat them but it doesn't have a flower like the giant milkweed and the other milkweed which which is kind of a two for one in a sense that you'll get butterflies and sometimes uh, hummingbirds and bees to those as well other other species of butterflies so it's get, you're getting more of a two for one but here this one just primarily attracts the atala but I love it because this is a great ground cover it's a Florida native, and it attracts the Atala, which has been endangered, but it is having a bounce back, a resurgence, because I think a lot of great folks like you all who watch our channel and, and gardeners in general here in South Florida are planting more of the Kunti, and that's that's wonderful because they need that, because that is their sole plant for producing offspring. How big does it get, Mike? This will get about three by three. Okay. Um, giant right. milkweed, 10 by eight can be a small tree, or you can keep it smaller in a pot if you want. This will get to about, you know, two and a half feet, the, the, the tropical milkweed as will the uh, native milkweed. Yeah, so I think we covered the Kunti. Let me see, let me check my notes to make sure there's nothing else we're missing. Oh yes, scale. Scale and mealybugs can be an issue for the Kunti, but more scale that I found. On uh, the milkweed, aphids. Not the giant as much, but definitely the tropical and the native milkweed get aphids. Better to spray it with water. You don't want to use chemicals if you can because you don't want to get the monarch to, to ingest that or the caterpillar to ingest that. So it's best just to kind of knock the aphids off with, with water and we'll show you a, a, a video of them, a little clip of showing them on a plant. The aphids are like this orangish color and they, they just cluster up and down here. You can also get ladybugs and use Biocontrol, which we absolutely love ladybugs. Mom did lots of ladybug paintings back years ago. I remember seeing her do some of that artwork. And ladybugs are great. Certain ones that will just eat up all those aphids and keep the aphids from tearing the plant apart. Because that's what the butterflies will do. And again, before I forget, it's okay. Buy several of the native milkweed if you're getting, if you're gonna get some of those for your garden, because these will get eaten to the ground and that's okay. They'll re-sprout, but the caterpillars are voracious eaters to so just chomp away at it. So it's very important to 
to make sure you uh, know that. So you plant a few of them so you don't have just one one plant taking all the caterpillars and just chomping it to, to the ground where it doesn't have a chance to bounce back. So I get like five or six at least and put them in your garden. So are we ready to move on to I the think passion so. vine? Is yes. that this one right here? Yes, it is. This is the native passion vine. There's other natives uh, in Cornada. This is the corky stem passion vine. It does not have as showy of a flower, but it is a wonderful butterfly magnet for the zebra and the Gulf fritillary. Love those butterflies. You have the zebras constantly coming through here, so someone must have a passion vine somewhere in, the, in one of the other neighbor's yards. But the, the corky stem is kind of cool because it can be a vine or it can kind of be a ground cover. It doesn't have very showy flowers like the others. We'll show you a, a video clip of those right here so you can get an idea. The Lady Margaret has more of a red flower, and we had that at my nephew's home. We did a video actually on, on that. And this will show you right here, that video clip, so you get an idea of what, what that plant looks like and how well it can cover. It can grow six feet by six feet easy. And the blue or purple passion vine have these just spectacular flowers and almost like something alien, spacey looking. And let's see, is there anything else I wanted to talk to you all about that? Drought tolerant, yes. Oh, on zone, grow zone, nine to 11 for the giant milkweed. Kunti, pretty much similar to that a little bit. It can go like 9A to 11. The passion vine, believe it or not, can grow eight to 11. It's, it's a very hardy plant. It may die down, but there's even some that they say can grow in zone seven, but I don't recommend it because I don't know. But if any of you have grown them up there in, in zone seven, please let me know in the comments below because I'd like to uh, know that they do well enough because down here in South Florida, they definitely do great. But, uh, but there's a lot of literature and IFAS is saying that University of Florida IFAS researchers are saying that this can grow further further north way north in those those lower zones where you have freezing weather so it's a tough tough vine but you're going to get a ton of the gulf and you're going to get a ton of the zebras they go crazy 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 for this plant uh, this is this is a huge butterfly magnet that and, and the milkweed for sure and now that we've talked about that we're going on to what the lemon tree Yes, the Myers lemon or citrus in, in general is the host plant for the, remember? Butterfly? A butterfly. <laughs> swallowtail. The giant, swallow. the giant a half a point swallowtail. For that? You got half a point. Half a point. Giant it's swallowtail. A hybrid. Yes, it, it actually is a blend of the Eureka and it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. It's good for a pot. You can keep it on your patio. You can use lemons. The lemons will, will ripen in the fall. But the giant swallowtail will lay, lay, lay its eggs there and develop larva that looks like what, Rach? I showed you last night. The I, larva. You're <laughs> Amy, me out so much. What does it look like, Amy? It, it looks like, it looks uh, like uh, bird doo doo. Bird poop. And it's a strategy that uses, and we'll show you a, a, an image here of it right now. It uses that Outside strategy images. to keep birds and other, other uh, wildlife from trying to eat it. So, so cool. I love, love that love that that nature finds a way with these these abilities and and if you look at many different types of caterpillars you'll see that they have like these fake eyes on them to scare away insects and 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 you know get their chance to to, to get to that point where they can get to the chrysalis and and morph into the butterfly but it's a it's a host plant for that the the, the giant swallowtail typically wants the wild lime plant you had a key lime at your first home, right? Mm -hmm. And it will attract to most citrus and, and, and lay its eggs and larva will develop. But the Myers lemon is a wonderful, wonderful plant for cooking. You can use that as well. So it's twofer in this case. And the giant swallowtail is just spectacular at the, um, what was it? The uh, Chanel and Art Basel a few years ago, I assisted and our team assisted Chanel and One Tree Planted and hosts of other folks to bring a temporary garden. And we had some Myers lemon and lemon trees there. I'll show you the video. We have Monarch that, uh, not Monarch, <laughs> sorry. We had the giant swallowtail coming in, trying to find it. And then actually later we had larva there, the little caterpillars, it was so cool. It's just wonderful. And the flowers on this, the scent, citrus is just spectacular. It's so close, Amy, to your gardenia. Mm. You know, we love the gardenia love scent, but snow. that lemon and the, and the lemon flowers come out in the spring, they're just beautiful. They, the scent is amazing, but it's a super tough plant, the citrus in, in general. But here's the big caveat, citrus greening. You all may know about this. Those who don't, it's a problem that has hit Florida. It's also hit California now, and it is keeping the fruit from ripening. 
So you wanna make sure you have a healthy plant on a good sour root stock. If you can graft it to a plant that can help deal with just being healthy because this pathogen can kill citrus, but there's a lot of stuff that IFAS and other folks or researchers are doing to try to inoculate the plant or find a way to control the pathogen that, or the insect that brings the pathogen to the plant. So that's something to be aware of. And we'll probably be doing a video, I'm sure we will do a video on citrus greening because it's important because so many people have backyard grapefruit and other citrus, but, but it is an issue for, for you to be careful of and make sure when you're buying a plant or buying a plant in general, make sure it's Florida number one. And, and speaking of all that, now that I've bounced around and talked about so much, we're gonna rotate over into written care instructions so we can go over each Crazy. one of these for you. Oh, bonus plant, sorry, I forgot. Thank bonus you, Rach. Bonus round. Bonus round. Can you grab that one, Amy? Let's move this one aside. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? That, my friends, is the Pentis. Can look similar to the Taiwanese Exora, and we'll be doing another video on low, low ground covers, so make sure you stay tuned to our channel because there's there's been some interest, folks, on wanting to know what, what are some very low ground covers you can use in South Florida. This is one of them, and this is a butterfly magnet as well. It's not a host uh, plant, but it is a nectar source, and it flowers all the time. It's a perennial. You can get these in a wide range of different colors. Such a cool plant. And we, we just wanted to uh, mention that as well. It's not a host plant, not as much of a butterfly magnet, but it is a, it is a pretty potent magnet in, in, in its own right. So again, what we'll do now is we're gonna rotate over into written care instructions, and then we'll come back and do a quick closing at the end. All right, let's go on to that step. Well, we wanna thank you so much for joining us today. And before we go, I'm gonna ask Rachel if you have any questions for me. Actually, this time I do. <laughs> How What's that? How big does this lemon tree need to be to get me some lemons? So it'll, it'll probably produce, this one will probably produce in about a year, a year from now, a year and a half, you may get one or two. 
and then over two or three years, you're gonna start getting a lot. So it's gonna, when it doubles in size from this, you'll most likely start seeing fruit uh, occur, but you, I've seen them, I've seen them fruit at this size. So it's, it's typically about a few years out from when you purchase one and this is in a three gallon. So that's when you'll start getting fruit. And then as it goes, if you plant them in the ground, you'll get more fruit, but you can, you can definitely keep these in a large pot on your patio. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful addition. And when they flower that scent again, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Very refreshing. Yeah, it's one of my favorite scents next to the gardenia. So now that I've got any other questions, Rachel, or is that the main one? That covers it. All right, how about you, Stephanie? Do you have a question for me? Uh, actually, I do. Does, can you keep the milkweed in the kumsi in a pot, or do you need to put it in the ground? You can keep both of them in a pot. Good question. This will grow a little bit taller in the ground to about 10 feet, but in a pot, it'll do great on your patio. It's got these very unique, super cool flowers. Actually, when I look at this, it's kind of like the passion flower uniqueness in that flower. It's just so structural and strong, you know, very beautiful. And this is like some of our favorite colors, right? We love purple, right? Yes, we purple. We love purple and or lavender. And Kunta, you can keep in a pot as well or in the ground. Yes, very easily. And with that, I don't know if you have any questions, my dear sister. Nope. So with that, is there anything else? We want to tell them to what, Stephanie? Like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. And comment down below. Yes, if you have any comments, please leave us. Also, if you're just curious about other plants in South Florida that you want to know more about, just leave, leave us a comment and we'll make sure we get back to you. And until the next video, bye. Bye. Thanks so much. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family. We post videos weekly. Thanks.